it's superlatives time. Here's Miles Simmons with his first one, which may have something to do with the sound that we played on the way in. It sure does. And uh, I would say that this first superlative is the homecoming king, and that would be Jamar Chase. He had a great game, especially great second half. Seven catches, 132 yards, and two touchdowns. Both of those touchdowns came in the second half. But the play of the game really was the 60-yard touchdown that he had. And it was really, really key for the Bengals because it came at the end of a really key sequence. What had happened was the, the, the Saints had a chance to really close out that game with the four minute drive, but they go three and out, then they get a shank punt, and then boom, you get the throw right there from Joe Burrow to Jamar Chase, breaks a couple tackles, runs down the sideline, high steps his way into the end zone. Native son of New Orleans, really cool to see him have a terrific game in front of his family and friends down there in the Superdome. Well, wow, ran past Tyron Matthew on the way to the end zone too, another Louisiana guy who played at LSU. But Jamar Chase, we haven't seen it this year like last year. I think defense is concerted effort to take him away. Chris Sims has complained about a lack of creativity in the Bengals' offense, maybe relying too much on just lining up and letting it rip with Chase and T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd as the, op as the options in the passing game. But, yeah. hey, this Bengals team now at 3-3, three and three, they've lost three games – with walk-offs just like the Ravens, like the Ravens have a story slash explanation slash excuse for their three losses the Bengals have a better one they could have slash should have won all three of those games and they've had heartbreaking losses but they keep winning and they're in position to make a run that's all you want to do is be in a position to make a run get around Thanksgiving be in contention and then you start putting the wins together one week after another through December and into January and who knows what happens after that first one for me Although he didn't strip off his uniform and parade through the end zone and into the tunnel, this is the Antonio Brown Award because we don't see this very often, but we did see it this calendar year when Antonio Brown was kicked off the sideline during a game between the Buccaneers and the Jets. Robbie Anderson kicked off at the sideline by interim coach Steve Wilkes during yesterday's loss to the L.A. Rams. And look, Anderson... I can understand why he's probably a little frustrated. The splash report comes out Saturday. It was too big for even a Sunday splash. Saturday splash with a concerted effort by the Panthers to get the word out that some guys are off limits in trade. Hey, would give up Christian McCaffrey for a lot. And the only guy we're really willing to get rid of is Robbie Anderson. I mean, players see that. They hear that. Robbie knows how he fits into that team now that Matt Rule's gone. Rule was the reason he was there in the first place. So it, it wasn't as entertaining as the Antonio Brown exit, but it still is odd to see a guy get kicked off the field. And there were multiple run-ins throughout the day. It just seemed like Robbie Anderson was determined he was going to get kicked off the sideline at some point, even though after the game he acted like he was confused by it. And, you know, at this point, who knows what's going to happen with the Panthers. But I have a feeling Robbie Anderson is not going to be on that team come Sunday, whether he's traded or whether he's released, Miles. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it seems like he might be gone from the team by Wednesday when they're out there at practice. So maybe they do one of those, you know, you are still on the team, but maybe you should just stay away. I mean, yeah, as you said, he did have a run-in with his position coach during that game in the first half. And then, you know, he said he was upset about not being on the field on third downs, whatever it happens to be. Panthers offense was absolutely anemic yesterday. So maybe they could have used him, but I don't know that it really would have made much of a difference in the second Trade into the place. Rams. So Trade into the Rams. For Cam Akers, who's already in the just stay home, he right, is, yeah. for, for the for the L.A. Rams. And yeah. then you have Cam Akers to help fill the load when you trade Christian McCaffrey to the Buffalo Bills. There, we've solved, we've solved all Whoa. the problems. Ooh, there's something a little spicy right there. F them there. picks, baby. Yeah. Hey, if the Bills want to win the Super Bowl, F them picks and go get Christian McCaffrey. I guess, yeah. I mean, why not go get an extra offensive weapon? Keep that uh, Carolina to Buffalo pipeline strong. All right, second one from me. Uh, let's call it Mac who? Because Bailey Zappi is doing some good stuff there for the New England Patriots, man. He is now, according to NFL research, the first rookie to win his first two career starts with a passer rating of at least 100 since Sonny Jurgensen in 1957. Mike, that's before even your time, man. That's a long, long time. Thanks. So, look, I, I think we got to give credit right now to Bill Belichick, Matt Patricia, 
and Joe Judge for having this guy ready to play. I mean, look, he's throwing the guys who are college open. The Browns defense can't stop a nosebleed right now, but you still have to execute those plays. We see quarterbacks all the time who even when guys are college open, they're not getting those throws in there. So Zappi had a really good game, 24-34 for 309 yards, two touchdowns, did have a fumble on the strip sack, um, but he's getting it done. And you know what? Mac Jones is going to come back, and our buddy Tom Curran put it like this. If Mac Jones is not on it, then Bailey Zappi's probably going to be nipping at his heels. Well, Bill Belichick had a couple of opportunities last week to say conclusively that Mac Jones is the starter when healthy, and he did not. Now, Mm -hmm. I've done some poking around on this. I don't get the impression that Jones is in danger of losing his job. This is just more about letting his ankle heal. He's got the high ankle sprain. If Bailey Zappi is winning games, there's less of an urgency to rush him back to the field. But there is something that I've detected as relates to frustration from Mac Jones. He goes from Josh McDaniels as his coordinator to the combo platter of Matt Patricia and Joe Judge. Not real thrilled about that. There's a belief that maybe Judge is a zappy guy. Not real thrilled about that from Jones' perspective. Mm. So we'll see. There's something there. But they're winning games Mm. with Bailey Zappi, and all that matters is winning games. This isn't, though, like Drew Bledsoe to Tom Brady. Bill Belichick was thrilled to get the opportunity to go to Tom Brady because he knew what Brady could be. They don't view Belly Zappi as the next coming of Tom Brady. They're just, they're just happy to be at 500. I mean, they were staring down the barrel of – and, and people, people actually thought the Lions were going to beat them. I didn't. But they've turned it around, and they're at 3-3, three and three and they're in the mix along with everyone else. Last one for me, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go rogue here. I'm going to do a combo platter here. I'm going to do Seattle Shade – and Miami Shade. Wasn't there a show with Shade in it or Seattle Slough? I'm thinking of the horse. Wasn't there a show that had the word Shade like a cop show? And I don't know. I'm gonna I have, have no to. I'm gonna have to Google about. it. It would. It was. It was a long time ago. It had to have been yeah. from the 80s. But anyway, <laughs> Seattle throwing some shade at Cliff Kingsbury and the Cardinals with this great homage to the well, draft yes. night setup that Cliff Kingsbury had for the virtual draft in 2020. I don't know how accurately and how – that's pretty close. That's good. I still prefer uh, prefer the the uh, view there by Cliff, but uh, yeah, uh, Pete Carroll doing a nice job and uh, not, not a nice job to give both Cliff Kingsbury and Steve Kime contract extensions, although we still don't know the amount and we don't know how much is guaranteed. So it could be that one or both of them still is on the outs if this continues. So that's one half of it, Seattle Shade. Then how about Miami Shade? We talked a lot a few weeks ago about how much hotter it was for the Bills in Miami because they were in the sun all game long. Here's the giant thermometer test. 80 or 90 degrees on the Miami sideline, which was in shade the entire day. Vikings sideline up near 120, and they had the purple jerseys, the Dolphins in white. I mean, it's a home field advantage. It's a home cooking advantage, and the visiting team is the thing that's being cooked in the oven that clearly makes a difference, although the Vikings ended up miles winning the game. Yeah, so. I mean, that's what you call home field advantage, as you said in that tweet right there. So, hey, the Vikings won anyway, so it, it, good for them. But, I mean, yeah, when you're going from fall conditions in Minnesota down to those hot conditions in southern Florida, that, that, does, uh, that, that can do a number on you. There's a fine line, though, between a home field advantage and actually putting the opposing players in danger of heat exhaustion. I don't know what that line is. And it's yeah. not like it's not like they, you know, directed hot air at the Viking <laughs> sideline. It, it just kind of happened based on the construction of the stadium and the combination of that and Mother Nature. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.